Hey there everyone, a little secret about me. I love bike parks, specifically lift service bike parks. To me, there is nothing better in the world than getting on a lift and minutes later be riding down a variety of trails for thousands of feet. Lift service bike parks are truly my happy place, but true happiness isn't always easily achieved. The best bike parks in the world are rarely located in convenient places, and the window to visit these parks may only be a few months each year. Plus, there's other difficulties, like long travel times, getting friends to commit, expensive bike rentals, and lodging. Still, this logistical nightmare can be more than worth it for a great bike park. Because nobody wants to do a bunch of work and get to a park with crummy trails, rude staff, and an overall poor experience. Well friends, in order to help you with these difficult decisions, I have come up with a scoring system to tell you exactly how great each bike park is and whether or not it's worth visiting. Now, I'm no expert, but I have been to a good number of bike parks and feel I've had enough good and bad experiences to know what a quality bike park looks like and if it's worth making the journey to it. The scoring system breaks down into five categories and has a total of 100 possible points. So with this system in mind, I recently traveled to Angel Fire, New Mexico and put this resort to the test. You probably already noticed that this category takes up 60 of the 100 possible points, and with good reason it does. Because let's be honest, the trails are everything at a bike park. I can forgive a lot if the park's trails are great, and this is by far the main reason why we choose to go somewhere. Devoting 60 points to trails basically makes this category a pass-fail for the park. And I think that's the way it should be. If I ever tweak this system, it'd be to put more points towards the trails. Because again, they are everything. I break down the 60 points into 12 subcategories, with a maximum of 5 points for each. And first up are the green trails. They get 3 points for their 3 green trails. I am tempted to give more since I think these long trails are more than enough for a beginner to have fun until they feel ready for something more advanced. But at the same time, three green trails doesn't exactly scream beginner's welcome. Five points here. There are a total of 15 blue trails. From these, you can find an awesome variety of tech, flow, and jump lines. Plus, the park does a fantastic job of providing intermediate trails that range from barely more than a green to ones that flirt with being a black. Angel Fire is an excellent place to go from beginner to advanced rider. As good as their blues are, the black trails might be where this park really shines. I've grown to appreciate more and more black trails that start off super steep and techy, but end with flowy berms and big jumps. I know it's more about what the mountain gives the trail builders, but it always feels like they're purposely designed to make you do all the hard work first and then give you a nice little reward at the end. Anyways, Angel Fire has this and everything else you'd want for advanced trails, an easy five points for this subcategory. Just three points here for the expert trails. They have four double blacks, and that isn't bad, but a longer, better double black jump line would definitely score them higher here. Don't get me wrong, Candyland is cool, but it feels pretty basic and underwhelming for an expert jump line. So that, and maybe just a couple more double black trails could definitely elevate this subcategory to five points. There is only one pro line at Angel Fire, and it's pretty short. Don't get me wrong, it was still too much for me to even try. But it'd still be nice to have one or two trails out there for people to aspire towards. I want to feel like there's always growth and new levels for me to achieve, even if I don't try it. Oh, forget that. Since I last visited two years ago, the flowy, smooth trails have improved a ton. Turbo Diesel and other trails felt so nice going down. They're clearly trying to raise their game by offering more machine-built trails with huge sweeping berms. A solid four points here, but if their progress continues, I'll feel much more compelled to give five points in the future. If you want to feel like you've been hit by a dump truck, a full day of riding at Angel Fire can and will give you that. Whether you're a green, blue, or black rider, you can find good, challenging technical trail here. 
another easy five points for this subcat board. Boulder Dash, Hungry Hippo, Last Call on Candyland are machine built 100% devoted jump lines. And I'd also say there's another six or seven trails that have a good number of purposely built jumps on them. They are plentiful at Angel Fire, but there's definitely room for more. <laughs> there's always room for more jumps. That said, I'll give him four points here because if jumps are what you seek, then you'll be very happy at Angel Fire. Non-jump features include, but are not limited to, skinnies, drops, wall rides, bridges, wooden berms, boner logs, and anything else that adds to the park's experience that isn't a dirt jump or berm. These things go a long way because it shows that extra effort and thought were put into their trails. While I think they could add a few more skinnies and drops, and maybe something really creative like a well tail or lily pad, Angel Fire still gets four points for the job they've done, filling their park with man-made features. Anything over 30 gets you five points here. And with 32 plus trails, this park has more than can be ridden in one day. Excluding Whistler, it's right there with having the most trails by any park in North America. I was there during the week, and I have to say, I was pretty impressed with how many crews I saw out maintaining trail. It seemed like every day at least one or two trails were closed for maintenance, which I will definitely take if it means I get to ride a perfectly smooth, brake bump free trail the next day. Perfect trail maintenance is probably an impossible task, because I still had really sore hands and rode some really washed out trails. However, I think my expectations for trail conditions are pretty reasonable, and I must say I was very pleased with the effort made while I was there. Another solid four points here. When I say elevation, I really mean prominence, which is often referred to by bikers as vertical. This is how much elevation there is between the top or peak of the mountain to the base. Basically, how high does the chairlift take you up? It's important because it's how much value you're getting for things like the lift ticket cost, standing in line and riding the lift. Having a bunch of trails is nice, but not having to constantly jump back on a lift is very important too. This subcategory is easy for me to score. For every 400 feet, I award one point. Angel Fire has just over 2,000 feet, and therefore gets five points. 2,000 plus feet means it will take you over 15 minutes to ride down the mountain. But really, it could take you up to 30 or 40 minutes depending on how you like to ride. Basically, Angel Fire has plenty of vertical. Well, that wraps up trails, and if you're keeping score at home, they get a 48 out of 60, which isn't bad at all. If I was just grading the trails, they get a B. Yes, room to improve, but pretty darn good. The next four categories are scored on a 1 to 10 scale, and we'll start with the staff. This category includes anyone that could be considered an Angel Fire employee, and I'm happy to report that every encounter I had, from the bike shop to the ticket counter, maintenance crews, and restaurant employees were pleasant ones. But a huge shout out to the fellas working the lift. I've always felt unloading bikes and watching the lift were among the worst jobs at a bike park. But the guys at the top always told me to have fun and enjoy my ride. While one guy at the bottom, whose name I unfortunately forgot, was so fired up every time I came down, he single-handedly elevated my experience. I know someone could have a different take on the Angel Fire staff, but this was my second time there, and I feel confident saying that the owners and managers are doing something right when it comes to hiring and managing their staff. Nine points goes to this category. Not everybody's going to be able to bring a bike, or they're just like me and want a day or two on a premium dual crown downhill bike. So for these reasons, I think having a solid bike fleet to rent from is a big deal. And once again, Angel Fire delivers with a nine point score. They have great bikes and a solid amount of options. After it was recommended to me, I got the Comical Supreme. This isn't a bike review, but if you're wondering, this bike kicks ass and I highly recommend it if you're in the market for a DH bike. Being that I visited during a pandemic, this wasn't really a fair time to be grading the locations vibe. But, as mentioned earlier, I was here two years ago, 
and based off of what I remember, the vibe is that of a small, close-knit bike park. During non-pandemic times, they host a good amount of races and other events. Plus, you're likely to see groups of people hanging out in the parking lot drinking beers and socializing. Where it does fall short, though, is that there's only one place to grab a drink or a bite to eat that's in walking distance, and the nearby town is really small. I'm only giving the vibe a 7, because after the lift shuts down, so does a lot of the fun. This category is pretty subjective, and it's really just a chance for me to award up to 10 points for anything else I think deserves credit. I'm giving Angel Fire 9 points for the really fast, awesome lift, short lines, reasonable lift ticket prices, and great weather. And, well, just because I like it. So there you have it. Angel Fire scores an 82 out of 100, and I'd say I'm pretty happy with that. I drove 12 hours just to visit this bike park, but would have easily driven another 5 or 6 to spend a few days there. I also wouldn't try to talk anyone out of traveling there by plane. I think it's well worth the money you'd spend, even though the nearest airport is still over an hour from the bike park. So let me just finish by saying this. If you live on this continent, and you're considering a visit to Angel Fire, then go. You'll be glad you did. Feel free to let me know what you think of this grading structure. I plan on doing more bike parks this way and I'm open to tweaking my system. Also, if you didn't like my score, please let me know why in the comments. This of course is just one guy's opinion, but I'm more than happy to let you know why your differing opinion is dumber than mine. Seriously though, if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching.